Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms 85 verses 11 through 12, as well as chapter 26, verse 2 and 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you that it gives us things to look forward to in the future, as well as um, just updates about what's going on now. We love you. We give you praise. We, we ask you to just keep us, God. Continue to keep us. Keep us steadfast, God. Unmovable. Always abounding in the word of truth, in the work of truth. God, just, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Psalms 85, verse 11 Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. I'm just going to go ahead and read verse 12. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. So I went ahead and read both of them because they kind of interplay with each other. They're they're related to each other. So it says faithfulness springs up from the ground. How does faithfulness, which is is God's continual blessing, God's continual um faithfulness to us we shouldn't use the word in the definition but his his continued faithfulness to us he is he is loyal right he's loyal to us he continues to provide for us he continues to let us eat on a daily basis right if you realize how um very finicky and well that's probably not a good word how very you know minute every detail is for us being maintained here on this earth you'll realize that even a slight change in in the rotation of the earth could kill us all even a slight distance um or, or gravitational pull difference can be the difference between us surviving and us not surviving us freezing to death and and us you know not continuing to live right us us not having food to eat it's just faithfulness springs up from the ground so this is this is birth both you know a, a spiritual kind of metaphor as well as physical because if if, if he's faithful to us then we're going to continue to have food right so it's going to spring up from the ground it is going to to come up for us in our harvest in our planting right we'll be able to continuously eat continuously live in this garden of the earth right and so also it, it's his faithfulness spiritually right it is constantly growing up and causing us to grow up and causing just all things to work together for our good right as we walk along this ground called the earth as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death as we walk through our trials and our afflictions his faithfulness is springing up right as we go along this path he's leading us and he's guiding us and it says and righteousness looks down from the sky so how can righteousness look down from the sky through God through Christ right through his his holiness through through his faithfulness towards us Christ is our righteousness and if he's to the right hand of the father and he ascended to heaven then he is looking down from the sky he is our righteousness he is looking down at us um and also you know just just his continued faithfulness as we abide in him he is righteous he is right there is nothing wrong in him there's nothing wrong found in him i like whenever i see anything in the bible um talking about looking down it reminds me of the eagle one of the cherubim that um are in the presence of god one of the beasts um that are in the presence of god it has the head of an eagle right and eagles represent something that is above that has perspective right something that can see down below something that can see and hone in on something very small right as it's flying above as it's hovering above and so that's what I think of whenever I think of anything that is above looking down below I think of that cherubim um 
that is in the presence of God, right? And so, um, well, one of the, no, I'm not the cherubim, yeah, it is. It's considered the cherubim. So, yeah, one of the beasts, um, uh, the spirits that go back and forth, they are in front of God, right? So it says, yes, the Lord, you can go into that teaching. There's actually a teaching on that um, from the book of Revelation in um, the Revelation teachings. I'll actually try my best to find that one and link it at the end. So verse 12, this is the scripture of emphasis. This is the one that the Lord um, was really pressing into me was, yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. So God is going to give you what is good, you guys. And it's coming so soon. I can feel his presence. Like I just know that he is about to reward many people. He's about to pour out a blessing as he comes, right? Not only are we receiving blessings that as we live here on this earth as we continue to occupy until he comes but we're also going to receive blessings as reward right because he says his reward is with him when he comes to receive us to him in the sky his reward is going to be with him it says yes the lord will give give to us that means it's a gift it's given to us what is good and our land will you Yield its increase. Remember the um, scripture, um, not the scripture, the um, the thing that the Lord had shown me in that dream. I want to say it was a year or two ago. It's in my dream book, and it was about not touching the harvest. Right? It was it was the yield, the increase, the harvest. It was saying help. Right? Help is is to pray to the Lord of the harvest that He send forth the laborers. Right? And and that's us. And then it says, "Don't touch the harvest. Don't touch." Right? In the dream, it was saying, "Don't touch." Why? Because it's the Lord who is going to yield the increase. He gets the glory for the increase. But it says it's our land that will yield its increase. Right? Remember when you had the saints, the the saints that come in, the the um the ten mean a saint he was the one who got the um well done thou good and faithful servant have you been faithfully serving the lord continuously every day it is a process it is not always um, easy right it is a seeking it is a, a keeping right the lord keeps us and he he gives us strength day to day um and grace to continue on in the progress but it is a process right and it says our land will yield its increase hallelujah our land will yield its increase it says yes the lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase the people are coming the souls are coming the 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 fruit is coming right so when we just need to to wait on the lord to inspect the fruit right at the bema seat judgment the things that were not done for Christ will not last, right? So they're going to burn up anything that was the hay, the straw, the, the things that were not, um, not um, uh, planted in the proper fashion with good motives and good intentions, um, the Lord will judge it then. And he's going to burn up the things that were not of him. And he's going to let go the things, you know, those things. And then he's going to keep those things that that actually were good, right? That's part of the inspection. That is part of his, his eye looking upon it and judging it. Amen. All right. We won't be judged at the beam of seat our works will be judged at the bema seat amen all right let's keep going so psalms 26 verse 2 and 3 verse 2 prove me O lord and try me test my heart and my mind we want to be tried we want to be tested this is a psalm of david and he's asking god to prove him right because he knows that his intentions have been good his motives have been good so it says prove me O lord and try me test my heart and my mind he knows that his inner being his innermost being his heart has not been wicked his heart he when he did something 
right? And and be it good or bad, whether it turned out good or bad, he knows that his intention and his motives have been good, right? He has not been conspiring against others. It's others that have been conspiring against him. He's saying, prove me, right? Like test me, try me because he knows what's inside of him is good, right? Because what's inside of him is God. The meditations of his heart um, have been more than likely pleasing in the Lord's sight. And he knows that you know the test of of your own heart. You should be already judging yourself so that you might not come under judgment, right? You want to judge yourself. You want to look at your own heart. You want to let the Holy Spirit examine examine your heart that way that when God does it, it, there are no surprises, right? The Holy Spirit's already revealed to you the things that God is working on that, that you need to yield, right? So it says, prove me, O Lord, and try me, test my heart and my mind. So for your steadfast love is before my eyes and I walk in your faithfulness. So he's saying your steadfast love is before my eyes. That means I can see your faithfulness. Just like in the previous one where it it was saying that faithfulness springs up from the ground. That means he's seeing this thing occur on a daily basis. It's springing up as we're walking along. It's springing up as we're walking along it's that daily daily bread that God gives us it's that faithful um, continuation that he has for your steadfast love his love is steadfast right Thank you, Jesus, for steadfastness. Thank you for always being there. Every time I go to sleep, your steadfast love is there. Every time I wake up, your steadfast love is there. And it has been there as I slept through the night. Even when I wasn't thinking on it, my spirit was rejoicing in you because you have been steadfast singing over me, watching over me as I sleep at night. It says, for you, your steadfast love is all is before my eyes and I walk in you your faithfulness. Wow. It, it, that's so amazing that God tied these two scriptures that are so far from each other together. And it says, and I walk in your faithfulness. And we just said, faithfulness springs up from the ground, right? So he knew what he was doing when he tied these two together, right? He says, faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. But it says here, for your steadfast love is before for my eyes and I walk in your faithfulness. Do you walk in God's faithfulness? Walk with the Lord, right? When you, when you cut your heart off to him, it, it can, it can be very bland, right? You might not even know when you do it, right? But you know when you do it, you know, you know when you're not open, you're conscious, usually in the beginning, when you first cut off, right? When you first, uh, I'm going to do my own thing right now. You, you kind of know where you went wrong, but then it's kind of hard to figure out that you are wrong sometimes when it's continuing to go on. You you kind of get turned over to that reprobate mind. There's dissipation of the spirit. The spirit is not warning you as heavily and harshly anymore because you've allowed it to be dissipated. How you're not sober, you're not vigilant, right? You're you're being lackadaisical, right? And and it's causing um, a loss of sobriety as we've talked about before. You need to be sober. When you're sober, you're alert, right? When you've when you've drunk something, it's harder to be alert. You're almost more in fear. You operate in fear when you can't be alert. If you've drunk something and and you're trying to get home or something, you just operate in a spirit of fear. And I'm telling you guys, because I have not always been saved. I'm just just keeping it real right now but you know it, you you operate in a spirit of fear when you're not sober right you're you're t- on tiptoes you're trying to get home you're trying to get right 
right? And that's not the way that God wants us to operate. We need to operate in sobriety. We need to operate with full consciousness of what we are doing, knowing that, hey, God is with us. God is keeping us. And and it's easier to see ourselves, to look in the mirror and see ourselves, to look in the mirror of the word and see ourselves, right? It's harder to see yourself if you're cutting yourself. There's cutting this area off. I'm just going to keep that quiet. I'm not going to talk about that to the Lord. I'll deal with that some other time. No, you don't know when your last moment and hour are coming. And I'm not just talking about a car accident or something like that. I'm talking about the rapture is coming. And you don't want to be snuck up on. You don't want to get stuck here for seven years trying to clean your garments or however much time you have, right? It could be seconds uh, and, and death can come to you. You don't want to be here. It is not a pleasant place and you don't want to have to sacrifice when Christ has already paid for your sacrifice. He's already given you every grace that you need walk in him, live in him, abide in him now, right? That's how we walk in his faithfulness. He's been faithful to us from the time he ascended and caused his spirit to come down on this earth. He has been faithful to us. His spirit has abided with us. It was for our own good that he left and his spirit came down. Thank you, Jesus. It says, for your steadfast love is before my eyes and I walk in your faithfulness. Can't you see his faithfulness? Can't you see his steadfast love? It's always there for you. It feeds you. It clothes you. It rocks you to sleep at night when there's when you feel lonely, right? He's right there. He never leaves. He never leaves you. Amen. All right, guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.